This is a story about me, Thomas the Tank Engine, and my adventures when I encounter a tiger. One day, while Thomas was waiting at the station, he heard some children from the local school talking about a new wildlife park which was opening soon on Sodor. I'm sorry that the old zoo is closing, said a little girl sadly. Cheer up, said one of the boys who was with her. It will be much better than the old zoo. It's going to have lions and tigers and even a hippo. What's a hippo? Thomas asked curiously. You'll soon see, said his driver. You never know. We may even have to carry some of the animals to the park ourselves, ready for the opening. Thomas was very pleased to hear this. He wondered if he would be allowed to carry the hippo. Before long, the animals began to arrive. Some came by lorry to the wildlife park, but some also came by rail. Thomas and the other engines waited excitedly to find out which animals they would be carrying. They worked very hard pulling extra trains to transport the different animals. The giraffe couldn't fit into the cattle truck, so he had to have a special wagon built for him instead. They had to make sure that he did not travel under any low bridges because of his very long neck. Everyone liked the elephants. They swung their trunks and trumpeted loudly as they clambered up the ramps into their trucks. All of the engines were very excited about their unusual cargo of animals. The next morning, Thomas's driver was extra happy. He whistled as he clambered into the driver's seat. Why are you so cheerful today? asked Thomas. We're going to the harbor today to collect something for the wildlife park, he told Thomas. Isn't that exciting? Thomas peeped his whistle in agreement. I wonder what it could be, Thomas thought quietly. Maybe it was a hippo. At the harbor, an enormous crate awaited them. Thomas heard a curious meowing noise coming from the crate. What's inside? Thomas asked his driver. It's a tiger and her cubs, he explained. The tiger had come all the way by boat from a zoo abroad. A crane gently lifted the crate onto the truck. They didn't want to scare their special cargo. Thomas's driver made sure that the crate was securely in place on the truck. Then Thomas set off carefully, chuffing through the countryside with his precious load. At the station, Thomas waited patiently while the big crate was unloaded. Careful, Bert, said the foreman to the forklift driver. There's a big cat in there, you know. Well, it's certainly the biggest cat basket I've ever seen, exclaimed the forklift driver. He hadn't realized that the foreman was talking about a tiger. The forklift truck trundled off with the crate to load it onto the back of a lorry. The tiger and her cubs would be going the rest of the way by road. Thomas was sad to see the tiger go. He'd been proud to carry such a noble and beautiful animal. And she was certainly one of the most unusual loads he had ever transported. I wonder if I shall see her again, Thomas said to his driver. You will one day soon, I'm sure of it, his driver replied. The new branch line to the wildlife park will be open any day now. Near the station, there was a disused engine shed. The rails to the shed had been taken up years ago, and the track that was left was strewn with weeds and old sleepers. The men used it for storing things they did not use very often. It was full of rusty cans and old machinery. The windows were broken, and a spider had made a huge web around the funnel of an old engine. People rarely visited the shed at all, except for the odd occasions when they might be in search of spare parts. Later, when Thomas was passing the shed, he thought he saw something moving inside it. It looked stripy. That's strange, Thomas thought to himself. He had never seen anything like that before in the old shed. He wondered if he should mention it to his driver. But then he decided that it was his eyes playing tricks on him. After all, it was very dark in the shed. Thomas went on his way. 
Later that day, Percy also passed the old engine ship. He thought he saw some eyes glinting in the gloom. It gave him a bit of a scare, and Percy let off steam at the shock. Suddenly, the eyes disappeared. That's strange, Percy thought to himself after he had recovered from his fright. He had never seen anything like that before. He resolved to talk to Thomas about it. I can't understand it, he told Thomas. It was as if someone or something was watching me. Do you think someone else is playing a trick on me? Thomas thought hard for a moment. He remembered the stripy shape he had seen while driving past the shed. Could it be a coincidence that both he and Percy had caught sight of something strange in the old engine shed? Percy, said Thomas, you've just reminded me about something unusual that I saw earlier too. This will require further investigation. You are kind, Thomas, Percy said. I just hope no one's trying to make a monkey out of me, that's all. The next day, Thomas was at the station. He was listening to his driver talking to the fireman. It says in the newspaper that a tiger has escaped from the wildlife park, said the driver. Is it the same tiger that Thomas carried from the harbour? The fireman inquired. The driver was amazed. Why, oh, yes, it is that tiger, he replied. And her cubs, too, he added. I wonder where they could have got to. I don't know, said the fireman. They could be anywhere by now. He would think someone would notice a tiger walking down the street, though, the driver laughed. Thomas smiled. He knew where the tiger was. He thought of telling the driver and fireman straight away, but then he relented. No, not yet, he thought. I'll wait until we get to the sheds. I'd like them to have a stripy surprise. The driver and fireman spent all day keeping a good lookout for the tiger, but they never even saw a whisker. Later that day, when they were working in the yard by the sheds, Thomas smiled to his driver. Look in the old engine shed as we pass, he told him. When they came close, Thomas slowed right down to give his driver the chance of a good long look. His driver leant out of the cab and peered into the gloom of the shed. Why, look, he exclaimed. It's the tiger and her cubs. That was very smart of you to find them, Thomas, the fireman added. How did you know where to look? Ah, oh, that's my secret, peeped Thomas. And then he thought about how Percy had tipped him off. But let's just say a little monkey told me. Now that the tiger and her cubs had been found safe and well, it was important they were kept out of harm's way. There was no time to lose. While the fireman organized a track gang to put a fence around the shed, Thomas's driver rushed to the fat controller's office. He wanted to tell him about the tiger at once. We'd better let her keep her know she's safe, said the fat controller. He telephoned the wildlife park immediately. However did you find her? He asked the driver. That was Thomas, his driver explained proudly. And a little monkey. Outside the fat controller's office, Thomas chuckled quietly to himself. A lorry came from the wildlife park to collect the tiger and her cubs. The keeper was very pleased. They had been worried about them. They were, after all, the star attractions of the park. Well done, Thomas, for finding our tigers, the keeper said. Did you know that wild tigers are threatened by extinction all over the world? He asked sadly. So your quick thinking hasn't just saved three tigers, he went on. You may have helped to save an endangered species. The fat controller agreed. You've been a very useful engine, Thomas, he said. Tomorrow, we will be opening the new branch line to the wildlife park, he continued. And I would like you, Thomas, to carry me and my guests on the very first excursion. Oh, thank you, sir, said Thomas, and he beamed with delight.
Thomas often sees the tiger and her cubs when he passes the park now. They look much more at home in the wildlife park than they ever did in the dirty old engine shed. He feels very proud to have rescued the tiger family and to have helped to save an endangered species from extinction. As a special thank you, the keeper named one of the tiger cubs Thomas. Thomas was pleased, and he couldn't stop talking about it in the engine shed for months afterwards. He even wanted to have a new stripy coat of paint just like a tiger's, but the fat controller soon put a stop to that. Thomas was too honest to take all the credit, though, and he was careful to tell the tiger keeper how Percy had helped as well. So they named one of the new monkeys Percy in his honor. Needless to say, Percy never talks about it. <laughs> <laughs>